Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 24. This training tutorial, we're going to be focusing on how to set up and program our ignition coil dwell within our Haltech Elite systems using our NSP software. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with programming our ignition coil dwell for use with our Haltech Elite systems in our NSP software. Ignition coil dwells, one of the parameters we have to make sure is configured right, or else we could have poor performance from our ignition system and or damage the ignition coil. This is all related to something called coil dwell. The dwell time is gonna be how long we keep the coil charging for, and depending on how that length of time is going to be, if we overcharge the coil, cause overheating, cause failure, undercharging it, having too short of a dwell, will cause us to not charge the coil enough, and we'll find as a result we have weak spark energy and cylinder misfiring, and the engine won't run properly. So there is a sweet spot for the dwell that we, we want to run uh, to keep the coil safe and to have proper charging. And that's going to be really dependent on different types of coils. So if you have a Honda K-series coil versus an LS-based coil, they're going to have completely different dwell times, and that's all related to how the internal circuits are set up within the actual coil. So there's going to be a primary and a secondary-based coil. We need to go in and understand how that works, uh, but just understand that different coils We'll have different dwell times so it's definitely going to be something to keep in mind as we're programming now we can get specific with our coil dwell programming if we have a coil that has a data sheet that tells us the maximum duty cycle we can operate that coil at something like um, an aem smart coil which is an ig1a coil the data sheet from aem will actually call out the maximum duty cycle we're allowed to run safely on that coil long term so we can use that to guide us in programming the dwell We'll get into that a little bit later. I have a calculator that I have populated that we can actually use as a way to see the duty cycle and making sure we're staying under what they recommend for that specific coil. So that's gonna be just an example of how we can be specific with our coiled well programming. We're also gonna talk about what to do with your ignition coiled well if you have no idea what the dwell time should be. If you're working with a coil you've never worked with before, there's no data on the in in internet if you try to search the part number, we can actually still dial things in, but there is going to be kind of a rule of thumb when we're dealing with our ignition coil dwell. So we'll talk about that here as well in the tutorial. What I'm gonna do right now is move from my idle control page and go all the way over here to the left under main. Now under main, I can move into the navigation tree and then move here into our engine configuration. Under engine configuration, we'll move to ignition system. This is where we need to go and program some of the details for the ignition system that we're working with on our vehicle. We find dwell time is available here, which we'll talk about how that relates. There also is other factors to consider. The ignition mode, how we've wired in our ignition coils. We have our edge, falling or rising edge, and our dwell mode, constant charge, is what we're gonna be using and working with when we're talking about a coil that requires a certain amount of dwell time to be specified. We do have this other option here, constant duty, that's related to a CDI-based ignition. So this would be something like an M&W or an MSD ignition that's going to be handling the charging and discharging of the coil. Um, so constant duty is not something we're going to pick. Constant charge is what we're going to be sticking to. Now, let's just talk about these parameters here real quick so we understand what they mean and how to configure them properly. And then we'll move into talking about how an ignition coil works and then understanding how the dwell relates to the programming of the ignition coil. Okay, so let's move in here and talk about our ignition mode. The ignition mode right here, we have some choices. The only one we really have to worry about when we're programming, doing any kind of dwell time, dwell type of programming, is going to be our direct fire or waste spark. These two options here are going to be related to a coil that has a built-in igniter. A an example of a coil with a built-in igniter, Honda K-Series coil, the Toyota Prius Denso-style coils, LS-based coils, um, R35 GTR coils, um, IG1A coil, so there's a lot of coils that have a built-in igniter. So something that has a built-in igniter typically has three wires. If you're unsure if it's uh, a built-in or, or not type of igniter coil, um, so a three wire is going to have power, it's going to have a trigger, and it's going to have some type of a ground. And that has the actual igniter itself built into the coil. If we have a coil that's a two wire, we'll find oftentimes those are going to use an external igniter. So the igniter is gonna be handling the switching load where we wanna trigger the coil to start to charge. There is gonna be a certain amount of draw or amp draw 
when that happens. And we don't want to have any of that switching load placed onto the engine management we're working with, in this case it would be a Haltech. We want to make sure that we have that switching load taken off. So that's why we use an igniter. If we're dealing with an external igniter, an external igniter will handle the- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.